Wonderful day, it's Father's Day, and today is a day where we where we honour our fathers, and we say thank you to our dads for what can sometimes be a, a very thankless and um, uh, and difficult job. <laughs> I saw my children going, like, yes. <laughs> but guys, please, if you haven't already. Honor your dads today uh, and just do everything you can to make them feel special because uh, they have a weighty job. And um, I'm glad we sang that song about us being children of God. And I just want to read a scripture from Ephesians 1. I'm going to read from Ephesians 1 4 to 7. Oh, yeah, we'll do the time. Sorry. Sorry, I forgot to write the task. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love he predestined us to be adopted as his sons through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will to the praise of his glorious grace which he has freely given us in the one he loves. In him we have redemption through his blood the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace. He chose us, guys. How amazing is that? God chose us to be his children. Just on the matter of fathers, um, I just want to honor Andy today. Andy was a spiritual father to many, he still is, and he always will be. And I want to encourage you all to find a spiritual father that can walk your walk of faith with you, who can encourage you. And uh, my family are laughing at me because they told me, Dad, don't put your hand in your pockets when you're preaching. So, <laughs> I see that <laughs> doing it again. So, I'll, I'll try and hold the microphone with both hands, stop myself and put my hands in my pockets. <laughs> but Ants, I just want to honor you and, and thank you for being a wonderful spiritual father to me. You have walked a long road with me, walked through the ups and downs of, of life with me, and gee, how, how pleasant it is to have a father, to have somebody who's a role model to you, to have somebody who, who, who can teach you uh, and be with you uh, during tough times, and you've done that for me, so thank you, Hans. I also just wanted to honor my own dad. Um, I'm very lucky because uh, I have a really cool dad. Um, and he's been a good dad to me. And um, I, I remember my sister and I sitting around the dining room table in the evenings, and we'd start scoffing away and we're eating, and, and we'd get like halfway through our meal, and we'd look up and we'd, we'd see my dad sitting at the head of the table, with his hands on the table, just sitting there. He hadn't touched his food yet. <laughs> What, what's going on? And uh, my kids will laugh and the Bible would be sitting there just chilling. Hadn't touched his food. And then he would, we would realize what he was doing. And I'd say, Dad, would you like the salt? He'd say, yes, please. And he would, I'd pass him the salt and he'd put the salt in his meal. And my sister and his dad, Dad does that. It's so strange. But you know the amazing thing was, he was trying to teach us to be aware of what people around you want and need. So don't just dive into your meal and scoff away. Look around you all the time to see who needs what and if you can help somebody else. And so it was my dad's way of, of, of teaching us to, to always be aware of people around us and what their needs might be. And um, it was an amazing lesson and it, it really has served me well in life. And um, my dad taught me to be a good Samaritan and he set a fine example for me. So I just want to honor my own dad for that as well. So, as a dad, as a father, you know that your children are going to experience life in all its glory. All the ups 
and all the downs. And some of us have been through a few more downs than, than others. But as a father, as a dad, you want to equip your children as best as you can to deal with the ups and downs of life. And it's difficult sometimes as a dad when you realize that some dreadful idiot may break your daughter's heart. <laughs> and <laughs> or your sons. But um, it's, 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 it's a really difficult thing to, to comprehend. It's a difficult thing to, to, as a father, to know that your children might uh, suffer from financial distress at some stage of, in their lives. That they may lose somebody who they love dearly in their lives. We are all going to face that. If we haven't already, all of us sitting in this room are going to face losing somebody who we love dearly. And that the, the pain that comes from that. And so there are many negatives and, and difficult things that we, we have to endure in life. And, and the Bible talks clearly about the seasons that we're going to go through in life. And so as a dad, as a father, you want to equip your son as, or your daughter as best as you can to deal with all those situations. And it's also very rewarding knowing that your children are going to um, also in, uh, have the, the pleasure and the joy of all the wonderful things of life. Mm. So I know like Andy and Kim's girls are, are Two of them are, are, have just recently got married and they're beginning flourishing in their, in their new love and the new season of, of their life and just all the wonderful re of rewards that, that, that come from in love. Meeting your life partners, um, the wonderful joy of family, the joy of, of, of friends and fellowship, the joy of uh, appreciating God's amazing creation which we can do every single day. So there are so many things to be thankful for and, 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 and to enjoy in life too. But, so uh, you, as a dad, you know, your child might find success, they might uh, fulfill some of the dreams that they have, and just as much that, you need to equip them for that as you need to equip them for failures in life. Because the trappings of success can uh, can cause just as much distress as, um, as as distress itself. So the entire gospel, I, I just um, the entire gospel is a story of an incredible, incredible loving father who loves us so, so, so much that he sent his son to die for us. Okay. How much more can God prove to you that he loves you than sending his son to die for us? He can't do anything more than that in, in, in my box. He just can't. And so we really need to appreciate what our father has done for us. No, the scriptures are full of stories which encourage us. And this is the amazing thing about our Father is He has not left us alone. He is not an, an absent Father. He, our Father is with us each and every single day. And He is there teaching us all we have to do is pick this up. This is an incredibly exciting book, guys. I'm doing one of yours now. <laughs> oh, actually, I know what's fallen out of here. I actually meant to show you these. <laughs> these are pulled out of the drawer next to my bed. <laughs> Rebecca, look how she's laughing. So, I've kept one of these as a dad. And it's all my daughter's messages to me. And this one, inside, there's still an unclaimed voucher for a five minute massage, which I still have not been able to uh, obtain. So maybe I'll get it today, Bex. 
okay? And um, yeah, I didn't find too many from my sons, but um, that's probably quite normal. <laughs> I know they love me, so it's all right. <laughs> Where were we? Um, oh. Guys, everything we need for life and godliness is in here. And the whole reason Jesus gave his life up was so that his spirit, his Holy Spirit, would come and dwell in our hearts with us and encourage us and equip us and give us revelation to bring this word to, to life. You know, um, I have risk taken so much encouragement from, 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 from the scriptures. And God has given us everything we need from here. You know, whatever story rings a, a note in your heart, whether it's the story of Joseph, where he was betrayed by his own brothers, lands up being a slave, lands up being falsely accused, lands up in prison. I mean, Joseph's life is a disastrous story until he walks into the promise and the full, his full potential and he becomes second only to Pharaoh. I mean, what an incredible story that is about this restorative, amazing father of ours. And you know, through all those struggles, God was with Joseph. Oh yeah. <laughs> Whose phone is that? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Deacons, can you please evict this man? <laughs> so, um, whether the story that you relate to is Joseph's story, it may be Esther's story. Imagine Esther's story is incredible. Imagine the whole, they wanted to, the, 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 um, uh, well, they wanted to wipe out the Jewish nation. And it was this close from happening. And Esther was at the heart of that story. And uh, God, in his grace and mercy, turns it all around. And her enemies land up being the ones who are, are killed. And the whole nation is saved through Esther. Go and read these incredible stories. It may be the story of Gideon, the lowest of his clan, the, a Mr. Nobody. And what I love about God is He loves using nobodies. Otherwise, I def definitely would not be standing up there, trust me. So, <laughs> it's a feather in my cap, I'm a proper nobody. <laughs> but, whether it's the story of David, there are so many incredible stories which we can take encouragement from, where our Father teaches us lessons. Uh, he, he wants us to be equipped for life. And anything you may be facing in life, the answer is in here. Oh. I think my fingers got COVID. Um, so find a story which stirs up courage in you, which stirs up a passion for Jesus into you. Study it and dig into it. Our Father has purposefully and intentionally provided these stories for us. And the, this word, this, this God's word and scriptures are as relevant today as they were then. It is amazing. In fact, even more relevant today as it was in those days. So, What does a good father want for his children? I try to think up, I'm sure you guys have got a long list and your list may be a bit different to my list, but I've just picked a few things that, that, that I think um, are, are special to me. So, um, and as a father, you, sometimes you, you've really got to use your imagination 
to, to teach your children and to, to raise your children and you always looking for opportunities to be able to pour into their lives and teach them. And I have got this um, amazing system that I use and um, it goes like this, a good father steals chocolate. <laughs> okay, so you heard about my Snickers fetish and uh, I love chocolate. My eldest son doesn't like it so much. But he would store his chocolate up literally for months. <laughs> At Easter, you would go there two months later and there's chocolate sitting in his drawer. <laughs> nah, that just wasn't going to last in our house. <laughs> so I stole, I've stolen many of my children's chocolates. But it's for a purpose. <laughs> you see, I'm trying to teach my children, um, if you don't have any chocolate, can you still be happy? <laughs> if somebody steals your chocolate, can you quickly forgive them? <laughs> Do not store up when moth and rust, rust or hungry fathers can destroy. It is better to give than to receive. It creates opportunities to test your anger issues. <laughs> So, see how many lessons, and there are many more, but I won't talk about them. But it's, it's a very good idea to steal your children's chocolate every now and again. Um, so, let's get into the real, the real things that I would love my children to learn from me and from God and to learn in life and to be equipped to deal with. So, number one is to love. And of course, you know Matthew 22. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your strength. And love your neighbor as yourself. That's it. If, if I want my children to do one thing, I know if they've got that, they're going to be able to cope with with love. So, love. I want my children to learn how to love. You know what? Jesus was just the author and perfecter of our faith, but what an incredible example of love that he set for us. Yeah. When you look at the people that Jesus hung around, hang around with, and we are currently absolutely loving this, this series, What's it called? The, the Chosen. If you get a chance, start watching it. It is incredible. It's been so well made. But you see the people that Jesus loves. People like Mary. People like Peter. And the Chosen really brings these people's lives to life. And you see who they were. Just with all their character. They were, they were difficult people. They were broken people. And Jesus hung. Those are the people that Jesus went and hung out with. Not Mr. Perfect religious guy with all his robes. Jesus loves us all. I don't know how, how I got there. Oh, so I was talking about what a father wants to teach his children how to love. The father must teach his children how to forgive. You know, if we walk around as dads, and please, guys, especially all you dads, don't I don't want you leaving here today. Oh, I've done that so bad. You oh, are. None of us are perfect. And you know, the one thing I've learned about being a father is that love covers a multitude of sins. And you can ask my children, they'll give you a long list of times where, where, where I have definitely not set a, a very fine example to them. But you know what? The one thing that they know is that I love them. And we're not going to be perfect parents. None of us are. But you know who is? is our Father in Heaven. He is perfect in every way. Some of us may have had fathers. I'm very lucky I had a good father, but some of us may not have had very good fathers who, who, who may have not have set a very good example at all. But you know what? Don't let that tarnish your image of 
the perfect father that we have in heaven. Everything that you wanted from your father, if he didn't give it to you, your father in heaven can give that to you. And he wants to give it to you. And he's a good father. He's a loving father. And he wants the best for you. And if you find yourself in a tough spot, it's not because you are the forgotten child. Oh, he loves everybody else except me. Look at everybody else. No, he loves you. And I tell you what, running the Comrades Marathon, one thing you learn running, running that, and I often refer to it when I'm preaching, but one thing you learn when you run Comrades is it is a long race. <laughs> and it doesn't matter if you Bruce Fordyce or Mark Lonsdale, you are going to hit some serious tough times in that race. And your friends, your comrades who are running with you, they pull you through those tough times. And it is incredible. You run and you feel like, no, I have, I'm, I'm going to stop. No, no, I can't anymore. And you're about to stop and your mates say, you're not stopping. You just, just keep going. And they won't let you. You can see I've got goosebumps talking about it. It is an amazing experience. And one kilometre later, you feel like a king. You feel like you've got fresh legs again. And that mate who was pulling you one k ago is, hits the wall. And he's like, I can't anymore. And you're like, uh uh, you're coming with me. And you all pull each other along. And that's what this family is about. We all on our race. We all going to experience difficult times. We're all going to hit the wall at some stage. And that's what we, we, we need to understand. And our Father is there. Jesus runs every step of the way with us, encouraging us. And we, in turn, can encourage one another and spur one another on as we run this race that is marked, He marked out for us with perseverance, always keeping our eyes on the author and perfecter of our faith. So, we talk about things that, sorry, I'm getting a bit distracted here. But a good father wants to teach um, his children to forgive quickly and easy. Um, if any of you, and I'm sure most of us do, struggle with forgiveness, I have just finished a book by Lisa Terra Tur Turkurst. Sorry, I don't know what. It's T R K E U R S T. Anyway. And it's called Forgiving What You Can't Forget. It's a quick, short little book. I've got it on audio box and I've listened to it at, I think it's only two hours on audio box. And it's, so it's, it's a, an incredibly powerful book about forgiveness. And guys, she, she says this, she says, um, uh, where is it? Forgiveness is not made possible by our determination, but our cooperation with what God has already done for us. This is a whole preaching in itself, forgiveness. In fact, it's probably a whole series. But uh, also this week, um, in one of my quiet times, I heard the story about this... Um, this bishop in Uganda, and he wrote a book, I Love Idi Amin. So Idi Amin, at the time, was a hectic dictator, and he was having people in Uganda murdered and killed on a daily basis. And he had a friend of this bishop, who was also a bishop, he had him killed, and he murdered his friend. And he wrote this book, I Love Idi Amin. And he said, it's about his revelation from God that even though this man was so fallen and so broken and murdering his friends, he was able to forgive him and in fact love him. So it's just an amazing story. And, and, and he says that, don't do the devil's work for him. If you let anger, resentment and bitterness take root in your hearts, you are doing the devil's work for him. Good, Guys, if you've got 
any unforgiveness in your hearts, your Father in heaven today wants to say to you, no, you need to let this go. And find somebody to walk alongside with you, go and confess it to somebody who you trust and who can walk this road with you and help you because it is not something that is easy to overcome. So a good father always, he also uh, protects. He recognizes potential and he does his best to get his children to fulfill their potential. And uh, you know, he, he doesn't just let his child stay in their, in their comfort zone. A good father prunes off dead branches that bear no fruit. We've all got branches in our lives that we can see are, are just unhelpful and, and fruitless and are not going to be of any assistance to us. And a good father will point those things out to, to, to his children and say, hmm, son, this thing here is not helpful for you. Let's just break that branch off. And our Father in Heaven does that too for us in our own lives. So let's let Him prune us so that we can live full, fruitful lives. lives. Um, a good father allows some difficulty in their children's lives. And um, don't just bail your kids out from the, the first, first time when they start walking. Um, and they want to be removed from a situation. A, a good father assesses the situation and there's no immediate danger. They want to see their children press on. They want to see their children push through some difficult circumstances. They want to see some steel in their bones. We make things too easy for our kids. Uh, and there really is a tendency nowadays where they call them helicopter parents that just hover over their children constantly Maybe it should be a drone parent now. <laughs> but they, they hover over their children constantly uh, and try and remove any sort of difficulty that they may be facing. You're not doing your kids any favors when you do, them, do that. God, in the same way our Father in Heaven wants us to have some steel in our bones, us. He wants us to be strong. Um, could you, do you mind coming to read from here, or you can just read from there, Proverbs 3. So, poor Vicky at home saw she reads with amazing expression, so she'll do a better job than me. So, um, she's going to read Proverbs 3 verses, oh, uh, I don't know, verses, yeah, 1 to 12. Oh, there, oh, there we go. Yeah, I don't know why we're bothering putting those up, because only the people in the front row can read it. <laughs> but, it, it is helpful. So, will you read first? Thank you. My son, do not forget my teaching, but keep my commands in your heart, for they will prolong your life many years and bring you peace and prosperity. Let love and faithfulness never leave you. Bind them around your neck, write them on the tablet of your heart. Then you will win favor and a good name in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways submit to him, and he will make your paths straight. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and shun evil. This will bring health to your body and nourishment to your bones. Honor the Lord with your wealth, with the first fruits of all your crops. Then your barns will be filled to overflowing, and your vats will brim over with new wine. Do not despise the Lord's discipline, and do not resent his rebuke, because the Lord disciplines those he loves. As a father, the son, he delights in. Guys, uh, so when you get a chance, I was going to sort of unpack this, this scripture for you a bit, uh, but for the sake of time, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to. But there are some, if, if, every instruction here comes with a promise. So, my son, do not forget my teaching, but keep my commands in your heart. Why? Why? Because they're going to prolong your life many years and give you peace and prosperity. Do you guys want peace and prosperity? Who wants peace and prosperity here? Me. I certainly want peace and prosperity. How do you get that? Do not forget my teaching and store it up in, in your hearts. Jeez, how, well, isn't that an amazing instruction a father could give us? Eh? Hey, thanks for that one, Dad. Huh? 
Let love and faithfulness never leave you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. That, he's just trying to say, don't. Don't. It just it must be always, always on you. Then you will win favor and a good, a good name in the sight of man and God. I mean, how amazing is that? Love and faithfulness. Everything that we've been talking about before, there it is. Love and faithfulness. Bind it around your neck. Just live it out every day of your life. And you're going to win favor with man and with God. How cool is that? Trust in the Lord with all your heart and don't lean on your own understanding. When your life's not going the way you planned it to go and things are it's a, a, a shambles and you cannot understand what's going on. Do not lean on your own understanding. Submit your ways to Him. He will make your path straight. How cool is that? When you don't know where you're going and you can't see around the next corner and you just submit to him to say, okay, Jesus, come hold my hand. I'm going to close my eyes. I'm, I'm just going to walk with you. You, you, you. I don't know where I'm going anymore. Don't lean on your own understanding. Honor God with your wealth. With the first fruits of your crop. If you want things to go well with you, be generous to other people. Be kind to other people. Give other people your time. Give other people help and assistance. Uh, uh, you know, it's a known fact. It's a scientifically proven fact by the world, not by Christians, that people who are generous and kind to other people and who hold onto their stuff loosely are happier people. If you want to be happy, give. Give of your time. Give your stuff away. Give your finances away. That is going to bring you true reward and make you happy. That's a proven fact. My son, do not despise the Lord's discipline. Do not resent his rebuke. Sometimes we're out of line. We need to be disciplined. It's because he loves us. Like a father rebukes the son he, he, he loves. See how much I love you. <laughs> Luke's not here, but he would know. He, he's a probably loves. <laughs> okay. I'm going to end with this. We've had enough, but I'm going to end with this. Um, so. How should we respond to this amazing, loving, incredible Father of ours? I'm going to read from 2 Peter. You got that 2 Peter scripture there? Um, I'll just read it for the sake of time. His divine, 2 Peter 1 verse 3. Verse, uh, from 2 Peter 1, 1 verse 1 to 3. His divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life through our knowledge of Him who called us by His own glory and goodness. Through these things He has given us very great and precious promises so that through them you may participate in the divine nature, having escaped the corruption of the world caused by evil desires. For this very reason, make every effort to add to your faith. Yes, I've got faith. Okay, so now add goodness to your faith. And to goodness, knowledge. Okay, knowledge. I need to read the word. Okay, I need to um, read some books and gain some knowledge. Okay, now I know I've got this knowledge. Now I've got to have self-control so that um, I can, I know I'm not meant to have a, a bad temper. Now I actually need to add some self-control so that I don't lose my temper, Mark and stuff. And, oh, I messed up. Oh, okay. Add to your self-control perseverance. I'll persevere. I'll get it right. I'll keep trying. To perseverance, godliness. To godliness, mutual affection. And to mutual affection, love. For if you possess these qualities in increasing measure, they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive in our knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's how we should be responding as these loving children, as, as children of His, we want to honor our Father, that's how we can we, we can honor, honor Him, by growing and maturing in our faith. So guys, um, let's, let's pray. Um, just before we pray, um, can you uh, 
play that video for us. I'm, I'm sorry, it's a bit faded. Maybe we can turn the lights off. Just listen to the to the words of this video. It's 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 a pretty cool uh, video. It's uh, about a daughter who loses her dad, and um, he sends her out on an adventure and to for her own good for you guys as well. So you can go and watch it nicely. But it's such such an amazing video. Guys, we've got so much to be excited for. So this, this if you didn't quite see what was going on, his, the father designs this treasure hunt for his daughter and uh, he's passed away and he wants to leave her with, send her on an adventure where she's going to learn some things. And he doesn't make it easy for her and she, she, she has to battle and she's got to go on this huge adventure to, to eventually uh, find what he wanted to say to her. But sometimes our lives are like that. Sometimes we don't really know where we're going. But just walk with God. Just follow. He will give you leads along the way. He will, he will give you clues along the way. And just keep following those clues. And uh, just keep on his path. Um, no matter where you are, what stage you are in your, in your life, we have got so much to be excited about in our future. It is so exciting what God has for us. It's a glorious unfolding of just love, surrender to Him, living our lives under in His love. Um, it, it's just so fulfilling and, and, and fruitful to, to live like that. And I certainly hope my children will, will, will heed <laughs> my instruction and Jesus' instruction. Let's close our eyes and pray. Father God, we are just so grateful for you. We are so grateful that you do not leave us alone. Thank you that you have given us your word, which instructs us, which encourages us. Thank you for the incredible stories that we can read in, 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 in scripture and just learn from. Thank you that you died, Jesus, that your spirit would come and dwell in our hearts and counsel us and encourage us and strengthen us and give us perseverance and help us, Lord, just to be children who contribute to the family, who love those around us, who love our neighbors, who love and encourage uh, our, our fellow family members, who um, just are our children who are approved by you. That is the desire of our hearts, is to be approved by you, Father God. And for those of us who are struggling, help us, Lord God, just to press into you. Give us a revelation of how much you love us, Father God, and that you are right there for us, walking every step of the way with us on, on, on this race that you have marked out for us. We love you, Father God. We appreciate all that you have done for us. Thank you, Jesus. Amen.